Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I am Zemore, the Dan DPS, and today we're going to talk about five daily quests not to sleep on. Now, if you're new to the game, daily quests are quests that you can typically do on a daily basis, obviously, and they are also going to reward you with region specific loot and script. Now, today's video is going to focus on quests that either don't get found, or you don't really have a reason to go back to that area specifically because certain things need to be triggered, certain quests need to be done, there's all sorts of things that stop people from finding these quests and then some of them people just don't go to because they're awkward or hard or just boring but these all have a reason to do so with that don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe let's get into it Number one is an oldie, but it's one of the easiest quests to complete on a daily basis, and that is Heart of the Enemy. Now, the reason this is number one on the list is that it's just very easy, and often you end up doing what it needs you to do pretty much right off the bat. On top of that, with the dawn of Wastelanders and Steel Dawn, the main storyline of Appalachia has been hijacked, in a sense, so newer players are more likely not to stumble across this quest and while it's important that you complete wastelanders the original main story will lead you to this daily quest now i'll leave links down below to this quest line um, and any other quest lines involved in today's video i won't go into them today unless you guys want me to but yeah we'll leave it at that so heart of the enemy is a fairly simple quest you kill a Scorch Beast, and once it's down, you approach the corpse, and you press the button prompt. It extracts the, the creature's DNA, and at this point, you need to travel over to vault Tech University. Now, once you've travelled here, you follow the little breadcrumbs uh, until you get into the building, and you find the machine that will be on your screen right now. You deposit the DNA, and after that, you activate the terminal and basically complete the quest. Now, the reality with this quest is that most of us kill at least one Scorch Beast on a daily basis, typically the Queen. And quite often, there's a bunch of dead Scorch Beasts around that area anyway. So this literally takes two seconds seconds out of your day to go there and then deposit the stuff in vault Tech University. So I would heavily recommend it. It gives you eight script, so it's one of the highest uh, missions for giving you script. Now number two on our list is Camden Park, and this is technically three quests in one. Now you have to complete the quest Mistaken Identity in order to uh, get access to these dailies, um, but again I'll leave that down below. So the quest, you are literally taking part in some carnival games. The first is Dross Toss. What you do is you speak to the relevant Mr. Handy and then you pick up the stone object that gets highlighted or the dross. After this, you toss said dross like grenades through the rings. And I'll be honest, I don't think it actually matters if you get them through the holes, as long as you throw the stones that have been given. Um, I think it's five in total. The next quest is Lucky Mucker. To start this off, you pick up the bucket. From here, you find three wheelbarrows that are located all around Camden Park, and essentially you just click on them. Now, after you finish with this, you return to the Mr. Handy to complete the quest. However, I'll speed up the footage so you can see where all of the wheelbarrows are located. Um, one of them in particular is in tall grass and awkward to find if you don't know what you're looking for. Now the final of these quests is Chowline. You speak to the Mrs. Handy and you take a towel, and from that point you eat hot dogs till the mission's complete. They take a little time to spawn it sometimes, and if there's other people there, it can stop you from eating them particularly quickly. But as I said, these quests I very rarely see anybody at, so yeah, um, you should be able to do it fine. Now, after each of these quests, you get five script for a grand total of 15, which 
more than makes up for the, the amount of time you spend here because quests are really easy. You could spend maybe like five minutes at most in this area. However, the other reason for this is that upon completion, you also get Mr. Fuzzy tokens. These can be traded in for rewards at the terminal on the screen now. And some of the rewards are unique to these quests. So it's worth more than just the script that you get, um, especially if you're into like rare loot and stuff like that. Now number three on our list is a duo of quests, however they don't trigger together and I could not for love nor money get one of them to activate on any of my characters. However, these also don't give scrip, but instead you get a different type of reward. And that's in regards to booze recipes. These can only be obtained from our resident booze bot, Biv. And if you don't know Biv, well, then what you're going to have to do is head on over to a train station and find the poster that is now on the screen. This is going to activate a side quest that will, after a short and strange trip, send you directly to Biv, who's located inside the secret basement of Big Al's tattoo parlour. Now, there are two quests in question. The first is Tipsy Taste Test, and the second is Wasted on Alcohol. Now, I couldn't get Wasted on Alcohol to work, but that is what it is. Now, Taste Test involves finding and sampling on a beverage. In this case, for me, it's Old Possum, and then after you've drank it or done, you have to test a special trait. In this case, it's Endurance. So, I have to eat spoiled food. Now, wasted on alcohol is just as simple, you just need to craft a specific beverage and bring it to Biv. If you already have some, you won't need to craft it, so it's pretty damn simple. Either way, I couldn't get it to appear, so yeah. Number four on the list is Queen of the Hunt. Inside the mire, there's a location on the map called The Hunter's Shack. Now, when you first approach it, you're prompted to activate the terminal, and this leads you on a quest for cryptids. Three locations will be highlighted on the map. Each location has a creature present. Only one of them is said cryptid. Um, so if you're unlucky, you'll get either an angry yaoguai or a mega sloth, something of that description. But if you've chose wisely, the cryptid awaits. Now kill it, collect its DNA, via the same button prompt as the first quest that we spoke about today and head on back to the shack. The daily quest will show up on a daily basis once you enter the mire after the first completion so you won't need to always come back to the shack and the reason this is on the list is that if you're too lazy to approach the shack in the first place it could easily be missed and it's a seven script of event so if you farm script like me it's definitely well worth it. Now, the final entry on this list is going to be a bit controversial, and that's because I know damn well I'm going to get comments about how much you hate the events, but bear with me, I have a good reason as to why you should do it. The quest in question is someone to talk to. Now, to start it, head on over to Monaga and head over to this house that is on screen and into the basement. Follow the prompts, and by the end of it, you should have a Vox Syringer and a Holotape. Now, the basic premise of this quest is that you use a Syringer to dart free creatures, ranging from dangerous to harmless, depending on how lucky you are. Then you follow them around until your timer runs out, and during this whole time, the animal's speaking to you, whether it's saying, I'm afraid, or I'm going to eat you, one way or the other. Now once you've run out the clock, you can either kill or ignore the creature, and once you've finished doing this three times to three assorted things, head on back to the basement and drop off the syringer and the holotape. Now the reason I'm telling you to do this event is pretty simple. It's based on where it is in the map. That's the Savage Divide. Now, for everyone that doesn't know, completing quests in different parts of the map has a chance of dropping a different set of items based on region loot. And in this particular case, the Savage Divide, the region loot, has a chance of dropping a rare set of items, the Scout Masks. And I'll be honest, the Savage Divide is pretty damn barren when it comes to events and dailies. So this is your only guaranteed option of a quest on a daily basis. Either way, do it for the mask if you, you know, want to do it. I would definitely recommend it and it's something that is on my rotation and it, it's an annoying quest, I won't lie, 
but it's kind of an, an evil that you need to do. So that was today's video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, a comment and subscribe. I would definitely love to hear your comments in regards to if there's certain events or quests that you'd love to see in a future video or you'd want me to go into more in, uh, information about these specific quests. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can tell, my voice is slowly, I say slowly, it's quickly returning um, to normal. Uh, the video on Saturday is going to have my voice being weird because it was filmed prior to today, um, but that is what it is. And we will catch you all next time in the wasteland.